Hello my soccer universe. The Champions League is back, but it was kind of a slow start, I have to say. I took a while until things got going, but in the end I think we had a lot of interesting results uh, going forward. Um, to me the big game was Napoli-Liverpool, Napoli won, talk about that in a sec, but uh, let's start with the two early games that were Inter Milan and uh, against Slavia Prague from Group F and Olympique Lyon against Zenit St. Petersburg. Uh, and you know, I was watching really the conference uh, program where they were switching between the matches. Um, I just, if I pick one match and I don't know how the others are going, and I don't see much for me, this is basically the best deal. And now that I can, I'm of course worth watching it. For those early games, I was not 100% attentive, especially in the first half. You know, kids still being around. We were celebrating my older daughter's name day, uh, trying to get them to bed and so on. So, you know, I saw a little bit. I saw that Lyon and Inter had the better of the two games in the um, first half. Uh, Inter especially missing chances, oh, but also Lyon, but then uh, Zenit runs a uh, counter-attack and Azmun gets the lead for um, Zenit and that's the halftime score. Uh, shortly after the half, Depay uh, earn, earns a penalty for Lyon, converts it, makes it 1-1 and then Lyon has many chances but just cannot convert. On the other hand, um, in then the focus really switched to Inter Slavia because as many chances as Inter had at the beginning, Slavia clawed themselves back in the game. There was a weird uh, red card review, which the referee in the end said, ah, I stick with my yellow. I think it was the right choice. But then Slavia really came a knocking and um, there was a shot that um, Handanovic called only... Uh, Block to the side and Ola Jinka in the 63rd makes it 1-0 for Slavia. My smile going like this. I know. The Czechs could, unlikely, could catch up with Austria in the standings. But there, and I really would like to Italy to have a good season. But not Inter. <laughs> I know. It, I know. I know, it's just my fandom, and I know for the Derby Inter will, uh, and probably we saw that the odds for Inter uh, winning got longer and longer as the day went on, and I can't remember, maybe it's because of the Derby, but let's see about it. And then Slavia actually could have made it 2-0, but it took a long stoppage time where um, Freaky from Sensi hits the bar, and Barella kind of really, I mean, he takes a shot, but I never thought this cool could have gone in, but it goes in. Makes it 1-1 one, one and uh, right at the end Lukaku has another big chance, but um, would have uh, ruled for offside any, anyway. So it's 1-1, one, one, uh, big stunner right at the beginning of uh, the Champions League phase. And then the late games, you know, kind of uh, stars. Uh, that was an immediate start. I mean, Salzburg kicked, uh, Salzburg against Genk kicked off sooner than all the other games. That was weird to me. And immediately Holland makes it 1-0 for Salzburg. I mean, furious start. Uh, and then Salzburg really always hitting Genk on the counter-attack. And it was not a nice evening for Genk. Let's put it that way. Um, stick with that game. Uh, they quickly, Holland makes it 3-0. Then uh, who else uh, scored? He Jung in the 36th. So within two to two minutes. Uh, 2-0, 3-0, uh, Lukum in the 40th pulls one back, but then Salzburg makes two more through Haaland, who is absolutely a sensational in the league. And Salzburg also, I mean, I think they have an average of five goals a game at least at the moment, and they keep this in the Champions League. Soboslai at halftime makes it 5-1. Samat in the 52nd pulls one back in the end, in 66, Ulmer makes it 6-2. All the Salzburg goals except for the last one, I saw were kind of counter-attacks where uh, Genk committed numbers forward and Salzburg is just exploiting that to the hilt. But yeah, in the first half, um, it was mostly Salzburg where the action was. Uh, the only other game where there was action was Ajax against Lille, where uh, um, not Sahavi, uh, Ziyech had, uh, hit the post with a really nice shot, uh, Quincy Promise makes it 1-0 and 
it was kind of an even game with slight advantage Ajax, but completely went out of hand after the half uh, when Alvarez makes it 2 0 and then Taliafico uh, even adds a third one. So Ajax is off to a good start. But for a long time, those were the only two games where goals were scored. Uh, the first other game where a goal then was scored was actually Leipzig against Mefica, where Timo Werner um, gets uh, the 1 0. Just when Benfica, at least the comment I said, just when Benfica was about to gain a little bit control of, of, of the game, Leipzig hits them. And by the way, Leipzig plays in some of, in one of the best champions, dedicated Champions League kits that I've seen in a long time. Uh, it's really adventurous. I really like that look. Uh, that is a great and amazing jersey, I gotta say. Um, of course, Benfica is a little bit um, shocked by that, and uh, Timo Werner can actually make a second goal for Leipzig. So both Red Bull teams at that point uh, are good. It wasn't the, so the first goal came in 69th and the 78th. Seferovic in 84th pulls one back, but it's too little, too late. I mean, Benfica tried but couldn't really get something going. And Slowly, slowly, slowly it builds in the other games. I don't remember now. I think the next one was that um, was Valencia, that where Chelsea had actually many, many, many chances, uh, couldn't convert, and then Rodrigo Moreno of a free kick um, takes it to the near corner and puts it into internet, gets Valencia 1 0 win. Ross Barkley missing a penalty uh, late, late in the game. The way it was one of those video review where you can see that the ball was headed on Vasse's hand, that was outstretched. And so, yeah, Ross Barkley, who came on and really stepped up confidently, but was not to be. It is 1-0 uh, for Valencia. So Valencia and Ajax in that group off to a good start. Um, and then the only other game where there were goals, there's only, only two, two more game games to talk about, is Napoli-Liverpool. That game, mostly, Napoli actually had the better um, of the game, or, or the better chances. Um, and I was surprised by Napoli's lineup with four um, offensive uh, players. You had, of course, the front three with... Um, Callejon, Insigne and Mertens, but in addition he played Jackie Lozano, so uh, that was a pretty uh, daring move by Ancelotti, but it paid off in the end, um, but as I said, Napoli had chances, I think there was a, a, a header by Mertens, which in itself is already, no, nah, it was a shot that uh, the keeper just could keep out. So better chances were with Na Napoli, but there was all also one where uh, they really invited uh, Salah to score, but um, was not to be. And then it's a penalty that, yeah, uh, during the uh, game they said, yes, there's contact. It is maybe not a strong penalty, but it should, should be one. Now I saw the highlights that say, well, uh, he wanted the penalty. Kai Kai Khan probably both is true, I still think. Uh, it is, you can give that penalty, yes, I'm from Napoli, but you know, I like Liverpool too. I said yes, yes to do to my wife. Uh, I really want Liverpool to win the league. They just won the Champions League. We need to have them to win the league. And, you know, that's why also, you know, when there's Italian teams involved, unless it's Inter, I'm always crazy for the Italian teams. Merton steps up. Um, Almost saved, but ball goes in, and then Llorente in stoppage time makes it 2 0 and seals the deal for Napoli. Uh, kind of a repeat of last season when Napoli uh, got also the win early at, uh, 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 at home to Liverpool. And yeah, Liverpool again. There was a theme last season in the, in, in the fall where they win everything in the league, but in the Champions League they got some losses there. So let's see how that will go. And then the other big game was Borussia Dortmund against Barcelona. Barcelona playing in their new third jerseys, where it gotta be said, uh, Dortmund had the better of the game, uh, at least the better chances. Uh, Barcelona might have had more possession or, 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 or whatever, but the chances that the ball Dortmund, had, especially in the second half, where the first was a penalty given, correctly so, that Ter Stegen uh, saved from Royce. He might have been a little bit off the line, but if you watch the replay, he's in front, but there's one foot still on the line. This might be something that we have to watch in the future for goalkeeping. Uh, Ter Stegen, many saves. I think from when I, when I saw the highlights again, uh, 
he kept Barca in the game. Absolutely. And um, there was a big chance uh, that hit the bar. No, I don't recall the name of that guy. Uh, but yeah, Julian Brandt. Um, hit the bar, had had another chance. I think Royce had a chance. Alcacer, it was really Ter Stegen who kept him in. But then in the end, suddenly Barcelona got a little bit more dominant without creating chances until the last minute when Messi, who came on first game of the season for him, Messi seemingly was there but you could see it was a little bit of a weird ball for him it got blocked and so it ends nil nil this means i mean the standings now don't say much but uh in group e salzburg and napoli are off to a start with salzburg a flying start i have to say they play liverpool away from home next that will be an interesting game uh, to watch i still would say liverpool will win that one uh group f all at one point but you Got a feel that this is lost point for Inter and a gained point for Barcelona. I think Barcelona can count themselves lucky like not um, losing against Dortmund. So uh, next is Barcelona, Inter, uh, Slavia, Dortmund, of course. In Group G, uh, Leipzig, kind of. You had the feeling, that, uh, despite them being the pot for them, that they might be favored in this group and they get off to a good start. I mean, the win at Benfica, that's a huge one. Uh, Zenit Lyon, of course, share the points, and Ajax and Valencia off to good starts as well. I think it's Valencia, Ajax in the next uh, round. Yeah, Valencia, Ajax, so that's already an interesting one. Well, let me know what you thought about the games today. Um, I really agree with my assessments. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye!